You can keep clapping. <laughs> Good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the spring 2023 commencement and hooding ceremony of the University of Memphis Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law. Before we begin, please take a moment to turn off or silence your cell phone. Will you now remain standing if, you're, if you are, and if not, please stand for the national anthem sung by our own Kayla Jennings. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we beheld at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket ran through The bombs bursting in air It flew through the night That our plan was Thank you, Kayla, for sharing your beautiful voice with us. Thank you all, and please be seated. Welcome to this momentous event, an event that acknowledges and celebrates several years of very hard work by the 103 graduating students who are here to receive their academic hood having completed the requirements of the Juris Doctor degree. Today's graduates also include five students who are completing the requirements of the dual JD MBA degree. Additionally, there are two students receiving certificates in advocacy, four receiving a certificate in business law, nine receiving certificates in health law, and two receiving certificates in tax law. We are privileged to have with us on the stage today several very distinguished university and law school officials, as well as several special guests. Each of these individuals will play an active role in today's ceremony. I have the great honor to recognize Dr. Bill Hargrave, who will confer the degrees upon our graduates on behalf of the university, Judge Bernice Donald, who will be our commencement speaker, Associate Dean Jody Wilson, who will assist with pudding. Professor Ronnie Gibson, Professor of the Year, who will also assist with pudding. The President of the Law School Student Bar Association, Melba M. Martin. And the class speaker, Julie Renee Chapman. I also would like to recognize Assistant Dean for Admissions, Recruiting, and Scholarships, Dr. Sue Ann McClellan, and Elizabeth Rudolph, Assistant Dean for Career Services, who are serving as marshals at today's ceremony. We appreciate their participation in today's commencement. Many members of our distinguished law faculty are also here to celebrate this milestone in the lives and careers of their students. 
I would like to recognize them. I'll ask each faculty member to stand when I call your name and to remain standing until all faculty members have been introduced. Professor Linda Black. Professor Ralph Frazier. Professor Karina Fung. Professor Sonia Garza. Professor Deshaun Harris. Professor Regina Hillman. Professor D.R. Jones. Professor Daniel Keel. Professor Katie Ramsey Mason, Professor David Romance, Professor Danny Shafson, Professor Kevin Smith, Professor Anna Vescovo, and Associate Dean Jody Wilson. Thank you. The Ferris Babango Faculty Scholarship Award was established in 2011 through the generosity of Ferris Babango PLC to honor outstanding faculty scholarship. This year's winner of the Ferris Babango Faculty Scholarship Award is Professor Katie Ramsey Mason. Congratulations, Professor Ramsey Mason. The Patricia and Dan Merle Professionalism and Ethics Teaching Award was established in 2018. The award honors the professor who most effectively incorporates creative and innovative methods for including ethics and professionalism into their teaching. This year's winner of the Patricia and Dan Merle Ethics and Professionalism Teaching Award is Professor Ralph Frazier. Congratulations, Professor Frazier. Established in 2019, the MLK 50 Faculty Service Award honors a faculty member that has demonstrated outstanding service to the University of Memphis, the law school, the Memphis legal community, or the broader national academic and legal communities. This year's winners of the MLK 50 Faculty Service Award are Professor Linda Ray Black and Professor Regina L. Hillman. Congratulations to Professors Black and Hillman. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce Melba M. Martin, President of the Student Bar Association, who will introduce the recipients of the Professor and Adjunct of the Year Awards. Hello, everyone. Um, Professor of the Year Award is voted on by the entirety of the student body. This year, the winner of this award taught every person in our class between contracts and tort. He helped start the Asian Pacific American Law S Student Association and is now chair of the Memphis Law Review. He has been a friendly and supportive mentor to many students and is very deserving of this award. Um, Professor of the Year is Ronnie Gibson. It is an honor to be named Professor of the Year by the class of 2023. 
I am humbled by the accolade. Through the years, I have to tell you, I've sat through a lot of graduations. And as a faculty member, I always thought, I am so glad that I don't have to give a speech. That is a lot of pressure. I just have to sit there and look distinguished. And then I thought about you guys, and it came to me. I know what this honor really is. It's retribution. <laughs> and for all of the cold calls that you endured in the last three years. And you know what? That's fair. So as I began the task of gathering my thoughts and composing my words, I asked your graduates what they wanted me to say, because it is their day. And I received three answers. First, I want you to be funny. Second, we want you to say something meaningful. Third, we want your words to be heartfelt. Well, let's deal with funny first. To my left is my boss, the dean of the law school. To the left of her is her boss, the president of the university. And since I truly enjoy my job, I'm going to decline your request to be funny. Next request, say something meaningful. Well, I actually had to ask the graduates what they meant by that. And family and friends, what they meant was they wanted me to share a meaningful memory from their first year of law school. So I gave this request a lot of consideration. And per my usual way of doing things when students are involved, I flipped the script and I gave them homework. So to put this part of my speech into perspective, you heard Melba say it. Uh, you should know that each and every one of the graduates spent time with me in their first year or 1L year of law school in either the contracts class or torts. And that is rare. Normally, I only get to teach half of the class, and the other half goes, oh, I'm so glad I didn't get him. Apparently, I made an impression. So I asked them to think about a Gibson moment, as I call it, from their first year of law school, and share it with me on a three by five card. So allow me to share only a few of the graduates' memories that captured the experience of being a new law student in my class. I'm gonna start with the card from Mr. Rashid. And Mr. Rashid gave it a title, Not So Welcoming First Day. It was my first day of law school via Zoom, and I was just about to attend torts. All of my prior classes were easy and welcoming. Despite having readings, the classes were typical meet and greet style introductory classes. Law school wasn't as daunting as I thought. When cameras were turned on for torts, my professor's first words were about the reading. He chose a poor student and ruthlessly grilled her over the cases we were meant to read. I was shocked to the core and wondered whether I chose the right career. Lead needless to say, that level of expectation instilled a work ethic in my studies that ensured I had a productive and strong 1L year. Thanks, Professor Gibson. Next, from that same section, this is from Ms. Lazzarini. The first day of torts class, you cold called poor Denise Lee <laughs> and made her work through an entire case with you. I don't remember much. I just remember being so terrified of law school. So now let's go to contracts. This one's from Mr. Henderson. And you all experienced this at some point. Mr. Henderson writes, his memory is, cutting off someone the first time they ask you a question and telling them with a smile, I ask the questions. Same section, contracts, Mr. Manis. Making me present a case after you asked if I was okay, and I said, no, I was up all night because my sister went to the hospital with COVID. Your response was, would presenting a case make you feel better? I said, no. 
you replied with, let's try anyway. I proceeded to present the case that morning. I hated you after that. I spoke to my dad on the phone after class, and he told me that he had to present at an important meeting that morning, despite also being up all night. It was then that I realized you were trying to teach me a lesson about life. P.S. I don't hate you now. Last card. This is from Alexandra Greenberg. My 1L year, I was very close to dropping out of law school. As I didn't think it was a good fit for me or that I fit in. One day, you spoke with me about students who, have similar, who were similar to me in personality and that they oftentimes could be successful in law school. This gave me motivation to stay just one some more semester, which turned into two more years. Thank you for your encouraging words. They got me to graduation. I know, I actually think I might need a Kleenex for that one. Graduates, as you undergo the process of entering the practice of law, I am gonna keep these cards. I'm gonna put them in a photo album. Ask your parents. I hold you in high esteem because you accomplished something that none of us has done before. You completed your first year of law school online, which it turns out was a Herculean task. You should be very proud because I am proud of you. Turning to the final request, I need to make my speech heartfelt. Okay, for this, I need everyone to check your watch. I make it 226 Central Time. Well, at the University of Wyoming, at this very moment, my oldest daughter, Emily, the rocket scientist, <laughs> is in a seat just like the one you are sitting in because she's, a gra she's graduating with her master's in applied mathematics. When I found out that I had been selected as professor of the year, I sent my daughter a text. I told her that if she wanted, I would attend yet another of her graduations and everyone would understand. She said the choice was mine. Well, I figured that since I started with you, on your law school journey, I could not abandon you at the finish line. So Mr. Davis, here I am. Don't worry about my daughter. She's going to work for Boeing in Seattle. <laughs> and with my love of, every, of aviation, you just know I'm gonna be there all the time. So Hayden, you asked for heartfelt, and I couldn't think of another way to show you, the class of 2023, in a heartfelt way, how much you mean to me than by choosing to be with you to celebrate your accomplishment on this day. Congratulations. Congratulations to Professor Gibson. We are so pleased to welcome the Honorable Bernice B. Donald with us today as graduation speaker. Judge Donald is both a pioneer and a giant in the legal profession and the Memphis community. We are so proud that Judge Donald received her law degree from the University of Memphis Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law where she later served as a member of the alumni and law, and law alumni boards, and also as an adjunct faculty member. In 1982, she was elected to the Shelby County General Sessions Criminal Court and became the first African-American woman to serve as a Tennessee state court judge. In 1998, Judge Donald was appointed to US Bankruptcy Court for the Western District of Tennessee and became the first African-American woman to serve as a United States bankruptcy judge. In 1995, Judge Donald was appointed to the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Tennessee and served as the first African-American female jurist on that court. 
and when she was confirmed to the United States Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit on, in September 2011, Judge Donald became the first African-American woman to serve on that court as well. Judge Donald is extremely active in the American, National, Tennessee, and Memphis Bar Associations, as well as in the Ben F. Jones chapter of the National Bar Association, serving in vital leadership roles on key committees. And in August of 2011, she concluded a three-year term as secretary of the 430,000 member ABA, where she was the first African-American woman to serve as an officer since the organization's founding in 1878. Currently, Judge Donald serves on the board of directors of the Stax Museum of American Soul and the Stax Academy Charter School, as well as as a founding member of the board of directors of the Center for Excellence in Decision Making, a nonprofit organization dedicated to addressing factors that inhibit equitable decision making in our community. Judge Donald has worked tirelessly throughout her career to break countless glass ceilings and sweep aside obstacles to equity. She blazes trails and reaches back to pull others forward. She is a champion for justice and a leader in every sense of the word. Please join me in welcoming Judge Bernice Donald. Dean Shafson, President Hargrave, those others on the dais, to the 2023 graduating class of the University of Memphis, Cecil C. Humphreys School of Law, your family and friends, and all of those in attendance, congratulations. I am honored to stand before you today uh, to give this brief address. I am awed coming behind um, the Professor of the Year, but I am going to take care of this task with joy and gratitude. Dr. Martin Luther King famously stated, and I paraphrase for inclusivity, the ultimate measure of a person is not where one stands in moments of comfort and convenience but where one stands in times of challenge and controversy. You, the class of 2023, have endured a challenging journey to arrive at this moment of due celebration. For a considerable part of your career, you pursued your legal education during the world's worst pandemic. During that time, you likely experienced isolation, anxiety, uncertainty about the future, and grilling uh, from some of your professors on Zoom. Many of you witnessed suffering and loss of friends and loved ones as the contagion raged on. You demonstrated resilience as faculty administration and students implemented new and existing technologies to create learning communities that supported and furthered the educational objectives of the law school. Although unpleasant, this, this disruption rather became an integral part and a lesson in shaping your education and your chosen career. It became a, a powerful foundational and an important tool for overcoming enormous obstacles, building community, and becoming a force for change. You, class of 2023, have the right stuff to be the most resilient, talented, innovative, and visionary lawyers of our time. But that only matters if you use it as a force for positive change, as a force for making the society in which you exist and others will occupy the best that it can be. Consider the example of Charles Hamilton Houston, Dean of the How Howard Law School and architect of the famed Brown versus Board of Education case. Dr. Houston formed a legal strategy and taught an elite cadre of lawyers to understand and implement that strategy to 
disrupt obstacles to equality. It was his vision, his talent, his expertise that was used to take the 14th Amendment and use lawyers and the courts to fulfill its promise of equality. You'll recall that Dr. Houston said that a lawyer is either a social engineer or a parasite on society. And I know that the University of Memphis Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law does not graduate parasites. Dr. Houston crafted and executed the strategy to overturn Plessy versus Ferguson, the case that enshrined separate but equal. By competent, committed, visionary persistence, Dr. Houston and his team were able to achieve a measure of success and bend the arc of time in the direction of justice. Those were the challenges of his time, but you will have your own challenges. And I know you will meet those with equal force, vision, and competence. The rule of law today, we know, some say it's becoming increasingly fragile as there is no shared definition among many groups about the meaning of the rule of law. But you are amongst the guardians who will champion, strengthen, and preserve that rule of law. Society is becoming increasingly, increasingly stratified along the lines of race, gender, class, sexual orientation, gender identity, religion, and socioeconomics. We have allowed ourselves to believe that there is a scarcity of rights. We act sometimes as if protection of my rights means a diminution in the rights of another, and that is not so. Years ago, Justice Learned Hand cautioned us that justice must never be rationed. As lawyers, as guardians of the rule of law, you must ensure equal justice for all, especially unpopular groups and unpopular causes. And you must constantly reaffirm the dignity of all persons, regardless of their status. Established rights and precedents are being reexamined. So the foundation of stare decisis, some would argue, is no longer firmly anchored. The profession is not immune from the slings and arrows of the larger society. But you will contend with what is the rightful place of precedence, of stare decisis, of established rights, and also you will have to contend with the place of emerging technologies, such as uh, AI and their interface in this complex society. We also know that trust and confidence in courts and legal institutions is sometimes being undermined. Racial and ethnic populations overwhelmingly lack confidence that they can get a fair shake in many courts across the country. That is a problem for all of us who are stakeholders in the justice system. So we can see that the legal profession is undergoing changes. With ever increasing competition and the need to adapt in response to the next new technology or the next crises, some would say that our profession is becoming more of a business than a profession. I reject that notion as I hope you will. But the truth or falsity of that statement is in your hands. With all of these challenges, why do I feel that you should be beaming with, beaming with pride and full of promise today? I will tell you why. You have taken the foundational steps to become a member of what I believe is still the most noble and honorable profession, one where you will provide a voice for clients who otherwise have no voice. You will forge strategies to meet the challenges of today and tomorrow. You will interpret rules and regulations. You will formulate rules and regulations that are designed to fulfill the promise of justice and equality. You will ensure that the fabric of our society and our environment are places where all individuals can expect dignity, equality, justice, 
and respect. You will be an important architect who will shape the society that we enjoy today and that others will inherit. And you will be an advocate for truth, justice, and fairness, and you will promote the rule of law vigorously and hopefully enduringly. You will do what lawyers have done for centuries past, only you will do it better because you're better prepared. I have great hope for you, and I take great pride that you've chosen to become a member of this profession. It is my hope that you will add your voice to the vigorous debates of the day and come down on the side of truth and inclusiveness. It is also my hope that you will practice your profession with courage, with selflessness, with integrity, and a measure of empathy for all of those in whom you come, will come in contact. I hope that at the end of those vigorous debates, you will also always respect the person against whom you debated. It is further my hope that you will chart an ethical path forward and always take the long view knowing that the decision you make today will influence the rest of your life, either positively or negatively. I have been a lawyer and a judge for more than 40 years and have been guided by certain core values and principles which I will leave with you today. These principles have served me well and I believe that they're time tested. So I hope that they will benefit you. First, always remember why you wanted to become a lawyer, why you chose this profession. Next, define yourself. Don't let others define you, but always hold yourself accountable. Strive for success, but don't fear failure, because often our greatest learning comes from minor setbacks. In order to move from good to great, you must learn how to deal with adversity, and that is an ongoing lesson. Plan for success but be prepared to deal with crises and always stay mentally prepared. Constantly assess where you are on your personal journey and make adjustments where necessary. Embrace difference, don't fear it, because to someone else, you are different. Always enlarge your circle. Most importantly, Engage in self-care, exercise, maintain a strong network of friends, stay close to your family, practice your faith, practice healthy nutrition, and even though ours is often a stressful profession, limit the consumption of alcohol and drugs and nurture your mental health. I commend you the words of Brian Stevenson. Get proximate. Learn each other's stories and develop empathy for those with whom you deal. And know that if better is possible, good is not acceptable. You are great. You have a great education. But your service must match your greatness. And let service be your North Star in all that you do. You're prepared to reach great heights. In reaching those great heights, always remember the journey is better if you take someone else with you. Congratulations, class of 2023. I look forward to your success. Thank you, Judge Donald, for your inspirational words. On behalf of the University of Memphis, Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law, and especially on behalf of the class of 2023, I offer you this gift. Before Dr. Hargrave confers degrees upon today's graduates, I wanna take a few minutes to reflect on the class of 2023. 
three years ago, you arrived virtually at the Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law. The world was in chaos, and frankly, we had no idea what was to come of your remote legal education. But like you, we were determined to do our best. You arrived committed to putting in the hard work needed to join a profession that would enable you to advocate for others and affect positive change. You likely realized quickly just how much effort was required to meet the high standards set by your professors. You learned what every law student figures out fairly early on, whether it's in a classroom or on a Zoom screen, legal methods is no joke. The Memphis Law faculty challenged you for better research, deeper analysis, and exacting writing. We have worked very hard to prepare you for the unforgiving demands of your clients, judges, and partners. We have endeavored to teach you and model the professionalism we are confident you will exercise in your practice. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to report that these students have satisfied the very high standards the School of Law has set for them. The fact that they are graduating today is proof not only of their high aptitude, but also of their hard work, their perseverance, their resilience, and their commitment to improving society. It is evidence of their ability and fitness to fulfill the heavy obligations that the legal profession places on its members and of their capacity to serve clients, their communities, and the public with honor and distinction. Members of the class of 2023, congratulations. These graduates here have made great sacrifices to arrive at this day, but they did not do so alone. Their families and friends, parents, partners, grandparents, children, siblings, loved ones, and friends have provided material, moral, and emotional support throughout their years in law school. On behalf of the Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law and the University of Memphis, I would like to express our deep gratitude to all the families and friends of our soon-to-be graduates, those who could be with us today and those who could not. They have much to be proud of. To the class of 2023, you have gained tremendous knowledge and developed the skills necessary to serve the legal community and society at large. You are now empowered to live out the dreams that drew you to law school. You hold the tools necessary to serve those in society who seek your assistance to achieve justice. It is a tremendous responsibility, and I hope it will always inspire you to give back to those who need your help. We are proud of you. Congratulations to each and every one of you. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Bill Hardgrave, President of the University of Memphis. Dr. Hardgrave will confer the Juris Doctor degree on each of the graduates. Afterwards, Associate Dean Jody Wilson and Professor Gibson will assist in placing the academic hoods on each graduate as Ed Brundick, immediate past president of the Law Alumni Board, introduces the graduates. All right, well, all the candidates for graduation from the Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law, please stand. With the approval of the faculty of the School of Law and upon the certification that you have fulfilled all the requirements for graduation and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees as President of the University of Memphis, I am pleased to confer the Juris Doctor degree upon you and declare that you are now entitled to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. We take great pleasure in presenting you with the academic hood for the Juris Doctor degree as evidence of your accomplishment. Please be seated.
Lauren Elizabeth Adams. Lauren Ray Adams. Joshua Autry. Jared Charles Badger. David Benjamin Baskin, hooded by his father, Peter David Harris Baskin, class of 1999. <laughs> Dylan Sage Beasley. John C. Blackman. Holton Grant Bowling. LaShondra A. Brown Jefferson. <laughs> Douglas M. Carey. Harley Marie Chapman. Julie Renee Chapman. Scott James Cheadle. Sarah Elizabeth Claxton, hooded by her mother, Judge Claxton, class of 1997. Dalton Christopher Cook. Molly C. Cook.
Alexander N. Deichman. Benjamin L. Daniel. Waylon Daniel Lee. Ashlyn Brooke Daniels. Matthew S. Davidoff. Audrey Lee Davis. Hayden Bradley Davis. Thomas J. Davis. Ward Pipkin Deaton. He promised you he wouldn't say anything. <laughs> Dominique Roberta DeFries. <laughs> Cooper Michael Edenfield. Very tall class. <laughs> Quinesha L. Fleming. <laughs> Alexander H. Gilbert. Jasky Goff the second. <laughs> Jack Oliver Gould. Madison Bennett Green. <laughs> K. 
Kenneth Wayne Gross. Alexandra Hammer Greenberg. Matthew Allen Hatfield. Peyton Leonidas Hemphill. Austin Alexander Henderson. Chastity Hester. Congratulations. Thomas M. Hughley. Tyler Lee Holworth. Austin Lawrence Horde. Davis Bradley Howard. April A. Huntoon. Jack G. Inman, hooded by Scott Rose, class of 1994. Michael A. Jacopel. Caroline Truitt Jasper, hooded by her brother-in-law, Alex Hall, class of 2015. Kayla Marissa Jennings. <laughs> Zachary W. Jernigan, hooded by his uncle, Michael Stevenson, class of 1991.
Ashton Jones. Holden Gregory Kirk. Zachary Abraham Cloville. I got it. She's going to challenge me. Catherine Miglacio Kuchenbecker, hooded by her mother, Dana Hardy Miglacio, class of 1995. Kirsten J. Cucker. Mia Catherine Lazzarini, hooded by her father, Christopher Lazzarini, class of 1992. Denise Shen Lee. Brennan Hope Little. Yale G. Manis, hooded by his uncle Howard Manis, class of 1993. Melba M. Martin. Christopher D. Miller. Hunter Lee Martin. Juan Ignacio Montserrat. <laughs> David Martin Morelli. Sky A. Moreno. Robert Hunter Parks.
Tyranny R. Parson. Alexander S. Perkins. <laughs> Never seen anybody get hooded on their knees before. Sarah Elaine Pine. Diana K. Pope. Joseph L. Punch. Danielle May Quadrani Riartes. <laughs> Alan Jafar Rashid. Ian W. Reagan. <laughs> Ann Rathel Raby. Sarah Grace Rhodes. <laughs> Elena Renee Rice. Kiva Elaine Richards. <laughs> Logan Ashley Ream. Daniel Joseph Riley. <laughs> Hallie Elizabeth Robinson. Kylie S. Rano. I got it, I got it. Ryan Lewis Rosencrantz.
William D. Ross. Lauren O. Ryan. Nicole Barbara Rydelski. J. Alex Sanders. Julia M. Scharf. Nutta A. Salim. William Peyton Smiley. Myrna A. Toma. Ryan W. Verhege. Jessica R. Warshorsky, so, pardon me, Warshesky, my apologies. I even asked her how to say it right before I said it. Taryn Elise Williams. Shelton Grace Wittenberg. Nakota Grace Wood. Trenton Giselle Woodley. <laughs> Chloe Ann Worley. Christopher B. Wright. Christopher. 
Carly Mayhew Zant. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the 2023 graduating class of the University of Memphis Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law. Congratulations to all of our graduates. You may now switch your tassel to the other side of your cap. Thank you to Mr. Brundick, who has been an enthusiastic, unflagging, and extremely effective advocate for our law school for many years. We are very grateful for his service and the support of the Law Alumni Chapter. The class of 2023 has selected Julie Chapman to address you all today. Please join me in welcoming your classmate, Ms. Chapman, to the podium. Thank you, Dean Chapson. Good afternoon. Before I begin, I would like to issue some well-deserved thank yous. First, I would like to thank God for all of the blessings that he has bestowed on my life. He has given me more than I could ever imagine, surrounded me with kind-hearted people, and given me a purpose in life. And he does not deserve any secondhand praise for what we have done today but deserves all the praise for what he has done through us. Thank you to our law school administration and faculty. Thank you to Dean Schaffson, who has been ferociously advocating for our school in more ways than many of us know. And thank you to our professors who invest in us as both students and human beings. We are so grateful for you. Thank you to our hardworking student body president, Melba Mango Magic Martin. And last, on, my, on behalf of myself and all of my fellow graduates, thank you so very much to our family members and friends. It's on important days like today that you remember that the best thing about life is the people that you get to share it with. Thank you for your support and encouragement the past three years and all of the years before. And thank you for traveling to be with us here today. Your presence is the best graduation gift that we could ask for. Thank you to our loved ones who are no longer with us, who were taken from us way too soon, our loved ones who may not be sitting in here but, are undoubted, but undoubtedly, their support is still felt very deeply today. It goes without saying that we couldn't have done this without all of you. You have stood by us every step of the way, 
and for that you deserve a round of applause. Graduates, please join me in giving our loved ones a standing ovation. Today is the day that our greatest dreams come true. We are doctors of jurisprudence. So to truly appreciate that, let's analyze one last typo together. Sorry. Imagine you're on a plane, ready for a well-deserved and well-earned vacation, when someone yells, is anyone here a doctor? Well, textually, you know that you could answer the call and be correct. Precedent tells us that you are not the type of doctor that they're after, and public policy mandates that you don't cut in line ahead of the medical doctor. But we all know that a reasonably prudent lawyer is ambitious, so you decide to answer the call. You walk down the aisle of the plane and say, yes, I am a doctor. The flight attendants take you to a very ill man who seems to have had an allergic reaction to the complimentary peanuts. You start eye-racking in your head, addressing counter-arguments along the way. You wonder if the plane was negligent in serving these peanuts. And you question if there was any contributory negligence on the part of the man. You then wonder if the airline deals in goods of that kind and is a peanut merchant. You think about the flight attendant's mens rea, and was his conduct willful and intentional? You then question if this man has a will in place or any advanced healthcare directives. You once again try to figure out what the heck the rule against perpetuities is, and if it somehow applies at all to the situation. And ultimately, after spotting all of these issues in your head, you look at the worried crowd who's asking, what do we do, what do we do? And you answer, it depends. We never thought that this day would come. We prayed for its quick delivery. We crossed days off of our exam study schedules, counted down the hours, minutes, and seconds during our four credit hour classes. And now that it's here, I'm sorry that it is, because it means leaving my friends who have inspired me and shaped my life impermeably and forever. In 2020, we started our classes online in Zoom boxes during the COVID pandemic. Getting a study group together felt like online dating. You sent someone a private DM and asked if they would like to meet for the first time in a public and very well-lit space. Time passed and eventually we moved on to hybrid classes and went into the school once or twice a week at 8 a.m. to see energetic Professor Shafson or Smith for the Section 11 folks smiling and telling us that the Erie Doctrine is actually super fun. Thinking about that now feels like a fever dream. And when you asked us how we were doing and how school was, we would probably say something along the lines of, it's fine, or I'm just tired. Well, it was not fine. <laughs> and I'll say it in case the graduates haven't told you, it was very hard. On top of the immeasurable stress of being a law student, the day-to-day -day struggles of everyday life seemed to exponentially multiply. Many students got their cars stolen. Some students got their cars stolen twice. Someone got two different kinds of parasites. And if you're wondering why there's a neon sign in front of the law school that says, please yield to pedestrians, that's because one graduate got hit by a car while walking to class. Don't worry though, he's fine. Our class experienced the unprecedented Memphis ice storm where we lost water for a week. We all had to learn how to find comfort in the solitude of the library. Some students got pets, the lucky ones got girlfriends. And now, with our caps and gowns on, it is very clear that we have made it. I look out at my classmates and I see determined and hardworking individuals who are gonna answer the call from countless people in desperate need of help. And lawyers aren't just good at arguing. We don't just really love reading and writing. Lawyers are the ones who speak up in the face of injustice. And now that's our responsibility. We will be called on time and time again by others experiencing what is likely one of the worst and most difficult times of their life 
in desperate need of help. We are problem solvers, advocates of our society, mediators of conflict, and a voice for those who cannot speak for themselves. We are now the people who must stand tall against big corporations and pharmaceutical companies. We will protect the environment, the elderly, children, employees, and animals. We will stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against the government to ensure that the rights of the people are protected and well-recognized. We can no longer sit silently when those in our society are searching for security and peace. It is now our turn to help. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. And now back to our graduates. This is your day. For most of you, except those of you continuing on to pursue LLM degrees in tax, <laughs> this is the last day of your school life after two decades or more of schooling. This is truly a tremendous accomplishment, but all of us assembled here today, your teachers, families, and friends know that many more, even greater accomplishments are sure to follow. As we send you off, we want to remind you that your relationship with the law school and the university does not end today. You will be University of Memphis alumni forever, and your accomplishments will bring honor to our law school and pride to our students, faculty, and alumni. Stay in touch. In turn, we will stay in touch with you and do our best to help and guide you whenever we can throughout your careers. Let me conclude this ceremony by expressing my great appreciation for some key members of our staff, in particular, Assistant Dean Meredith Aiden, who organized today's events. I also want to thank Carol Landers, Stephanie Hope, Joanna Darden, John L. Goins, Cheryl Edwards, Alanya Payne, and all of our student volunteers who assisted offstage in these commencement ceremonies. And thank you again to the Bluff City String Quartet for the music they provided for today's ceremony. Please join me in giving all of these volunteers a round of applause. I ask that you remain seated during the recessional as the platform party, the faculty, and the graduates exit. Thank you, and good afternoon. <laughs>